have three daughters and neither of them went to college to come down the docks, but they all wanted to come down. And you have to ask yourself, well, why is that, you know? Well, why, you know? Like, I am very proud of them, you know? I think every parent is proud of their kids anyway, no matter what they do. But I'm proud that they came down here. And the reason why I think they came down here, because they saw how excited I get about work, you know? Because no, you never get the same, you never be bored down here, you know? You have the same ship come in every week, but you'll have different problems. And you see men going home, blackfoot, coal and all, where they'd have to go home, no change of clothes or anything like that. You know, they're just, these were things they, they put up with. But now, I don't think they would put up with this today. They'd have to have their showers and things like that. If you have an accident here, if we had two ships, collide there, then the port closes. There's nothing comes in, nothing goes out. I think there's two, maybe three days maximum, fuel reserve for the airport here that comes in through this port. If we don't have tankers in or out, there's no fuel for fly aeroplanes flying. <laughs> The story of the port really is one of, of change, constant change. And I suppose it's, it's probably best encapsulated by when I first worked in marine terminals, we are having industrial relations discussions with some of the dockers. And one of the dockers looked at me and said, Mr. O'Reilly, I don't work for you. I said, of course you work for us, we, we pay you. He says, no, no, we work for the ships. You're here today, but you'll be gone tomorrow. The ships will still be here and so will we. 